Hi, this is Pat Keown. I'm a research analyst with Thomson Reuters Lipper, and I'm going to go over uh, what we've seen in fund flow activity for the first quarter of 2016. Our first slide here takes a look at the big picture. Uh, overall, we've seen about $30 billion in net outflows for funds. This includes both mutual funds and ETFs. Uh, for mutual funds, they've had about $46 billion leave, while ETFs have taken in $16.5 billion in net new money. This marks the fifth straight quarter of outflow for mutual funds and the 28th consecutive quarter of inflows for ETFs. The last time ETFs had an outflow was the first quarter of 2009. Looking at the chart, we see that money market funds are responsible for the lion's share of the outflows within the mutual fund group. Uh, muni debt funds managed uh, to take in about $10 billion in net new money during the first quarter, while equity and taxable bond mutual funds also had outflows for the quarter. Uh, equity mutual funds had about $3.9 billion leave the group last quarter. This marks their fourth consecutive quarterly outflow. Uh, the, the chief culprit for these outflows has been domestic equity funds. The group had $21.5 billion in outflows in Q1, and for the last four quarters, they've seen $188 billion leave. Conversely, non-domestic equity funds have taken in over $81 billion during the same time frame. Taxable bond funds, this marked their third consecutive quarter of net outflows. Uh, they saw roughly $18 billion leave this quarter, uh, which brings their three-quarter total to almost $143 billion in negative flows. Investment-grade corporate bond funds have been responsible for roughly half of these outflows. Moving on now, this chart takes a look at a closer look at the flows data around equity mutual funds, breaking it out by U.S. diversified equity funds, sector equity, and world equity. USD, USDE funds had negative flows of almost $17 billion in Q1. This was the eighth straight quarter of outflows for the group, during which time their coffers have shrank by over $236 billion. The $66.5 billion in outflows in Q4 of last year were the largest during this eight-quarter run. Sector equity funds were able to squeak out, squeak out positive flows of about $500 million in Q1 after seeing $3.5 billion leave in Q4 of last year. World equity funds got back on track last quarter with net inflows of $17.6 billion. The outflows of roughly $10 billion in Q4 were the first quarterly outflows for the group since the fourth quarter of 2012. This streak of 12 straight quarterly inflows grew the coffers of world equity funds by over $338 billion. Our next slide here breaks out the five largest equity fund net inflows and outflows by classification. For inflows, we see a mixture of world funds and USDE funds uh, for the most part, while outflows were dominated by the USDE group. Of note, the $17 billion inflow to in international multi-cap core funds marks the 28th straight quarterly increase, increase for the group. The group has not had a net outflow since the start of 2009. During this time period, the International Multicap Core Funds Group have taken in over $214 billion in net new money. The largest contributors last month to the inflows were the Cambiar International Equity Fund and the DFA International Core Equity Portfolio, which took in $1.3 billion and eight, eight, excuse me, $885 million in net new money, respectively. Amongst the outflows, uh, we see that the largest group, there's large-cap large, large cap core funds, and this is nothing new for this group. They've had outflows in 46 of the last 47 quarters, dating back to 2004. The only inflow came in the Q1 of 2014 and was for, for roughly $5.5 billion. The group has seen over $345 billion leave during this run. The, the largest outflows this quarter belongs to the Oakmark Fund and the J.P. Morgan U.S. Equity Fund. These two funds have negative flows of $1.3 billion and roughly $900 million, respectively. This, this slide here takes a look at the first quarter flows data for taxable bond mutual funds by classification. Leading the way amongst the inflows are U.S. mortgage funds, which had positive flows of almost $6 billion for the quarter. This is the group's eighth consecutive quarterly increase for a total of roughly $25 billion in net new money. All of la almost all of the last quarter's inflows came from the double line total return bond fund, which had uh, which took in roughly 5.2 billion in net new money. Other key contributors key contributors on the plus side last quarter were high yield funds, core plus bond funds, and core bond funds, which had net inflows of 4 billion, 2.4 billion, and 1.6 billion dollars respectively. Uh, of those groups that investors shunned during Q1, uh, leading the way was the loan participation fund group. Uh, they were the hardest hit, and they saw f uh, roughly $5.8 billion leave. 
Lone Par funds have had eight straight quarters of outflows during which time they they've lost over 500 excuse me lost over 56 billion dollars. The funds that suffered the worst outflows in Q1 uh, include the Oppenheimer Senior Floating Rate Fund, which saw 1.4 billion dollars leave. Uh, the Ridgeworth Floating Rate High Income Fund saw roughly 600 million dollars leave. And lastly, the Fidelity Advisor Floating Rate High Income Fund lost about $540 million. Moving on now to our last slide, taking a look at ETF fund flows. Uh, the slide breaks out the five largest quarterly net inflows and outflows for ETFs. Uh, if you recall, uh, overall, ETFs had net inflows of roughly $16.5 billion in Q1. Among the net inflows, we see that three out of the top five are equity ETFs. This is somewhat surprising considering that overall equity ETFs suffered net outflows of $13.7 billion in Q1. Leading the way this quarter was Spider Gold Shares with over $6.7 billion in net inflows. GLD, which bounced back from outflows of $1.6 billion in Q4, is the sixth largest ETF in the U U.S. universe with roughly $33 billion in assets under management. Taxable bond ETFs took in $28.5 billion in net new money for Q1. The largest contributor to this total was the iShares Core U.S. Aggregate Bond ETF with a roughly $3.5 billion in positive flows, which, which followed a $4.4 billion increase in Q4 of last year. AGG is the fifth largest ETF with roughly $35 billion in AUM. All the largest outflows, uh, if you, we take a closer look at the table here, all the largest outflows came from equity ETFs. Of note, two of the seven largest ETFs suffered outflows in Q1 after taking in net new money in Q4. PowerShares QQQ, $39 billion in assets under management, saw a $3 billion leave in Q1, while the iShares Russell 1000 growth ETF, saw with approximately $30 billion in AUM, saw their coffers shrink by the same amount that they grew by in the previous quarter, approximately $1.9 billion. Well, that wraps it up for my part of the presentation. I'd like to swing this back to Tom now, and uh, he'll wrap up for us.